Coming up next on Under the Radar Michigan, we head to Detroit's own Eastern Market for one of the most authentic urban adventures in the entire United States. Then we head north to find out why Saugatuck and Douglas are two towns that function as one incredible place to experience Michigan. We'll spend the night at a rare boat and breakfast and take a behind the scenes tour of the incredible food culture here. Then we kick back and relax Jamaican style and we'll do it all right here in Michigan. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar Michigan. Saugatuck is an absolutely beautiful place to experience all things Michigan. What's great about this resort town is that it's actually more like a resort community because when you're here, you can really feel that it's not just a great place to visit, it's also a wonderful place to live and work. There's something for everyone and everyone seems to love it here, including me. Saugatuck is located on Kalamazoo Lake just southwest of Grand Rapids and a stone's throw from Lake Michigan. If you're into the lake life, this area's got your name all over it. And if your name is Douglas, this area's literally got your name all over it. Because right across the lake from Saugatuck is the beautiful town of Douglas. So how about that? Two towns, one trip. Now, if you're like me, you've been to the Saugatuck Douglas area on Lake Michigan a whole bunch of times. Who hasn't? The place is absolutely beautiful. Great summer town, great food town. So when we decided to come here for the show, I wasn't really sure what to feature. I wanted to find something kind of under the radar. Well, we found three things I think you're really going to like. I like them a lot. Oh, yeah, I do. With all the things to see and do, you're definitely going to want to spend a couple of days here. And if you're looking for a place to stay, we found a pretty unique one. The Sea Suites is a floating boat and breakfast that's docked right here in the harbor, and it's the only one of its kind in Michigan. Now, whether or not you feel at home on the water, innkeepers Sally Coder and Pete Morrison will definitely make sure that you feel at home here. Tell me the story of how you ended up with a floating bed and breakfast in Saugatuck. Well, in 1998, Sally and I were deciding whether or not to buy a cabin up north or, or do something different like buy a boat. So we decided we didn't want to go through that cabin thing, cutting the grass every weekend, so we decided to buy a boat. So now we got to come up with an idea of how to live on a boat. So we kicked a few things around, and then uh, I, I think Sally came up with the idea, why not a floating bed and breakfast? Man, I wish I had that idea. But Pete and Sally deserve all the credit for coming up with a really unique business and life plan and they also picked the perfect place for it. You wake up every morning, you walk out on the dock, the sun's <laughs> shining, and you look in the back here and you go, wow, this is like living in paradise. There's nothing, uh, nothing like it. Uh, right now, for us, it's exactly where we want to be. And if you plan on being in Saugatuck anytime soon, I highly recommend you check out the C-Suites, or should I say, check in. Because if you're into comfort, relaxation, beautiful views, and friendly company, this place will definitely float your boat. When you head into town, it's hard to miss a piece of history that you won't see anywhere else in the U.S. The chain ferry here dates back to 1838, and it's the last of its kind. And just a quick old-fashioned hand crank across the channel is a great place to get in your daily workout. Now, if you're coming to Saugatuck, you gotta climb the steps to the top of Mount Baldhead. It's only 282 steps. How tough can it be? <laughs> oh, Bob. No big deal, I've done this before. It's only 282 steps, no big deal. This is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> Piece of cake. And the view of Saugatuck from up here is incredible. And there's also a dune climb on the other side of the hill that takes you right down to Oval Beach. Then you can swim off your workout. Oval Beach has been rated among the top 25 best shorelines in the world by Condé Nast Traveler. Just spend a day here and you'll see why. It's beautiful. After our trek to the top of Mount Baldhead, one of the locals treated us to a boat tour of the area. I couldn't think of a better way to cap off our first day, except for maybe a great night's sleep at the Sea Suites. Our next day in Saugatuck started off with a tour that was right up our alley. 
Hungry Village Tours is a great way to get a behind the scenes view of all the things that make this area such a great food destination. Creator and self-proclaimed local food nut David Gein was our tour guide for the day. So, first things first. I smell coffee. You're at the perfect place to eat. If you like to start your day off with a perfect cup of coffee, Uncommon Grounds is the place in Saugatuck to do it. And if you don't trust me, just trust your nose. Or mine. Oh wow, it smells awesome in here. It's the central hub of Saugatuck. You know, if you know me, coffee is like a food group. I love good coffee. And we found out right away why this place is so popular. By partnering with their growers and roasting in-house, they make sure that you're getting the best cup of joe around. And speaking of which... I'd like a cup of coffee, only uh, don't move. I've got a cup I want to use. Hold on. Okay. Here, could you use this cup I for me? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Maybe okay. next time. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Darn it. Okay, so with regular sized coffees in hand, our tour continued with a quick hop to the neighboring town of Fenville and an encounter with some local producers of the, well, four-legged variety. Evergreen Lane Farm is a goat farm that's producing some amazing artisanal cheeses. And it's just another one of the great places you'll experience on the tour. So this is all, it's all about the farm to fork concept. That's exactly correct. It's been happening for thousands of years and it's bringing back to the concept of knowing where your food is coming from and the people that are making it. It's real, this is real food. It's exactly true. Oh wow, real food comes from in here? It's the morning milking to make the cheese. I want to make goat cheese. Goat hey, cheese. I figured that out all by myself. Yes, here oh, we are. howdy, fellers. Girls. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, well, on that note, perfect time to leave the ladies alone and try some of the amazing cheese being produced here. And believe you me, it is excellent. Right. Well, it's, it's nice to actually come out and meet the guys that are making the goat cheese for you because I love goat cheese. Yes. And I should. Th Thank you very much. After saying goodbye and thanks to our new friends at Evergreen Lane, the Hungry Village tour took us right down the road and back about a hundred years. You'll feel like you stepped back in time when you arrive at the beautiful 400-acre Pleasant Hill Blueberry Farm. For over 30 years, Joan Donaldson and her husband have been working this land the old-fashioned way. Oh my gosh. Look at these. These are all organic blueberries? These are all organic. We've been organic since 1977. Wow, that was back before it was even chic to be organic. Yes, but some of these bushes actually were planted in 1939 by John's uh, grandfather. They live that uncles. long, blueberry bushes? If you take good care of them. Okay, guess I can cross blueberry farmer off my list of future careers. Best to leave it to the pros like Joan. Well, thanks for finding the good fight and give us the blueberries. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Can I have some, please? <laughs> well, they're just standing to ripen. I mean, you'd have to go over there and you could find uh, a couple. Try to find a couple. Yes. Well, I'm coming back with David because I'm enjoying this tour so much. I'm going to bring my family back. So good. we'll come back when the blueberries are ready. That's sure. right. Sounds good. Man, I wish we could have stuck around for the blueberries to ripen. But when it comes to me and lunch, there's no time like the present. Our next stop was Salt of the Earth in downtown Fenville, where Chef Matt Peach prepared us an amazing lunch that focused on the restaurant's simple philosophy. We're very ingredient-based and, and ingredient-driven. Um, we try to honor the ingredients by doing as little as possible with it. Um, we try to recognize the, uh, the fact that we're simply a part of the process, mm -hmm. um, and it's just as much about the farmers and the growers and the producers um, as it is about us who uh, needs to, to honor the ingredients once we receive them. By the way, have I mentioned that I love my job? The meal we had at Salt of the Earth was fantastic. And the Hungry Village tour was a great reminder that when you get to know the people, and even the non-people behind your food, it tastes that much better. And David was the perfect tour guide. What's your favorite thing about doing this? It's gotta be a blast. It's really a lot of fun. I mean, I'm meeting great people. I'm teaching them things that they might not know or haven't thought about. And, you know, bringing business to the local businesses as well. So it's like a win-win situation for everyone. Now our last discovery in Saugatuck might be hard to find, but when you do, you'll swear somebody stuffed you into one of those Star Trek teleporter machines and sent you straight to the tropics. The Red Dot Cafe is a little bit Jamaica, a little Key West, and a whole lot of fun. The atmosphere is relaxed and casual, the music is great, the people are super friendly, the food is top-notch, and just being here made, well, even me feel cool. Now, being that the Red Dock is, well, on a dock, you've got a couple ways you can find your way here. Either use your feet, or float in, tie up, and get down. 
The man with the plan is Chef Tony Amato, and this place is as much a reflection of him as he is of it, if that makes any sense. When you walk in here, it's not like you're walking into a restaurant or just a bar, it's like you're walking into a whole lifestyle, or how did it happen? Well, you know, the Red Dock is um, every restaurateur entrepreneur's dream. My background's in fine dining, and one day I woke up and I told my wife, you know what, I want a hot dog stand and I want to play music loud. And with those two simple little dreams, Tony and his wife made their way to Saugatuck, opened the Red Dock, and never looked back. We did everything to cater to a little bit of the alternative lifestyle here. Um, all of us are skiers, we're all outdoors people. I've been coming to Saugatuck for 20, 25 years and never, like I said, knew this place existed. Is this just sort of one of those well-kept secrets that... Yep, it's all word of mouth. Uh, the only advertising is people who see all the cars in the parking lot or they hear the music. Hear that, folks? If you want to find the Red Dock, just use your ears. And once you get here, they'll be happy you brought them. We do live music every Sunday, 4 to 8. I only hire bands that play original music. So we give people a chance to showcase their music. We have a, a list to get in here that is huge. Everybody wants to play here. And I'm guessing that after you see this segment, you'll want to come play here too. But remember three important things about the Red Dock. One, they're only open during the summer, which totally makes sense. Two, they close every night at sundown. And three, the place is cash only, so bring some green. And three things to keep in mind about Saugatuck. Come here hungry, stay for a while, and leave happy, just like we did. <laughs> Heck, I'm still happy. <laughs>